Hello and welcome to another video blog. One year ago, almost exactly to the day, I filmed a video blog about Gothamon's Little Deformer 3, the all-in-one granular groove box. Now, a lot has happened since that video. Most significantly, my hair has changed. If you've been following my YouTube channel since then, you will know that Gothamon has released another instrument, the Space Drum Blue and also the Space Drum Black, because apparently people wanted it in black as well. So in this video blog, we'll talk about the Space Drum, what it is, what it can do, and also we look a little bit at the interface, so how it plays. Now this is not a sound demo, I've got a bunch of those on my YouTube channel already, so check out the links in the video description below and uh, you'll find a bunch of music made with that device. Also on the Gothamon YouTube channel you'll also find lots of demos, so yeah, check those out if you want to listen to how that thing sounds. So what is the space drum? The name already says it's something to do with drums and the subtitle here reads analog drum synthesizer and that's an important part of this wonderful device. It's actually a true synthesizer which means you can create sounds from scratch and you're not just you know switching between presets or samples. In fact if you're starting with an initialized preset on this machine it won't make any sound at all and you have to build them from zero. Of course like the other Gotham instruments you can create your own presets easily so you don't have to start from scratch if you don't want to. Alright, so it is a drum synthesizer. It can also play back samples. You can load samples on there with a USB stick and it can also resample itself. But the subtitle also says analog drum synthesizer. So you don't have to use digital oscillators or digital filters or your samples. You can also create sounds the analog way using analog oscillators and filters. And this is another really cool aspect about the space drum. It combines analog synthesis, digital synthesis and sampling. And on top of that you've got the traditional Gotham and Grand effects. So after you've created your sounds from analog and digital systems, you can slap some granular effects on there and really mess up everything, overdrive it, or filter it some more, throw a delay on there, and so on. So yeah, it's quite the sound design beast, but what do you do with the sounds? Well, you sequence them, of course, and if you're familiar with the Gotham and Little Deformer 3, for example, then you will also know a little bit about the sequencing power of the space drum because it takes the sequencer almost exactly as it is in the Little Deformer 3. And that means you have 16 tracks for your 16 programmable sounds per preset or project. And you can not only trigger drum sounds, you can also play them pitched. So this synthesizer is also great for bass lines, for example. And you can also do variable length, variable swing, polyrhythms with randomization and so on. And while we're on the sequencer topic, let's talk about polyphony real quick. With analog instruments, polyphony is always a bit trickier to implement because for each voice you need discrete analog parts. And the space drum has four analog voices built in. Analog A, B, C and D. So each of those voices can play at the same time, but you can't play five analog voices at the same time. But four is plenty, and on top of that you also have four digital voices, which can also play. So you have eight voices total playing at the same time, which should be quite enough for your drum and bass sequencing. When you order the space drum from Gothamon, you also have the option to install four analog outputs. Now those are not the typical individual outputs, they are really analog outputs. So they will give you the option to have a true analog signal path from the signal generation from the analog voice through another analog VCA out of the machine. Normally all the data goes through the digital processing like with the effects and then it's being combined into a stereo signal. But if you're an analog purist then it definitely makes sense to get those analog outputs as well so you can stay truly analog without having any digital effects on top. Now when you browse the Gothamon website for the space drum you'll notice that there are two versions. Like I already said there's a black one as well and the difference is, is first and foremost that the black one uses different analog circuitry. So it has different sound creation chips on the analog side so the two versions sound a little bit differently. The black version also has a touch screen like the Little Deformer 3 but it's not really necessary in my opinion because the interface is very nicely streamlined and you don't really need a touch screen interface. However on the touchscreen model you have an XY pad option for modulation like a chaos pad. So you have an XY modulation parameter which you can use to influence your sound. So 
In that regard, it might be a good idea to get the touchscreen version. If you prefer the blue sound, however, you can also get the blue circuitry in the black box. So there are a bunch of options there and it's very cool that we have that choice. Okay, before we look at the interface now, here are some more bits and pieces which make this bass drum special. The Little Deformer 3's morphing features make an appearance here again. So you can morph between two different audio parameter sets, meaning you can program all your sounds once and then you just program them again a second time and the morph knob lets you fade between the two. So this lets you drastically change your sound obviously and this is great for performing and you've got the same thing on the sequencer side as well so you program one sequence for all your sounds and then you program another one and then you can morph between those sequences so this is also really great you can just you know flick that sequencer morph knob and you've got a completely different sequence which is still based on something that you programmed and uh, it makes performing with uh, the space drum really really fun <laughs> What I also like about this bass drum is that it uses a conventional 9 volt power system. So you can run it off a 9 volt power bank and the power plug is a standard 2.1 millimeter barrel plug. So this is great for your couch jams or for your camping vacations. And because it's so powerful you can really create a full album on the space drum and I did that well almost. I used some other Gothamon synths as well to create my variations for concert ukulele album which was released recently and which was created entirely using ukulele samples which I recorded. So even the bass drum and the snares are ukulele samples and sound design in a different way when you have a powerful machine like that. Okay, so let's have a look at the user interface real quick so that you know how to operate the machine. All right, here we are with the space drum interface. Like I already said, on the top left we have the morph knob for the sound morphing, the morph knob for sequencer morphing, and then there is a volume knob. Below we have four edit knobs which control various parameters which are displayed on the screen when we are editing sounds and sequences, but we can also map them to modulation targets so that we can have access to those targets while we're performing and while we're in different screen or in a different mode. All of those knobs are potentiometers. I know there are people out there who prefer encoders on their gear. I personally always preferred potentiometers because they have a defined start and end point. So everything in between will always be the correct number and I can feel or see which values I'm adjusting without having to look at the screen. Below the knobs we have four buttons to start and stop the sequencer, to switch between the morph layers and to enter function and steps or part mode. So as you probably already guessed those 16 buttons here are step buttons to enter your sequencer steps but you can also use them to jump to one of your 16 programmable sound parts. And on top of that you can also use them to jump to menus directly to make navigation a lot quicker and easier than if you went through the regular route. Now that regular route is done with the four blue buttons under the screen here. And actually I like this interface a lot also because you have two-handed control. The right hand will usually always be at the blue buttons navigating menus and the left hand will be at the knobs or at the buttons down here. But when I say that the right hand navigates menus, it's really a flat menu structure and you can actually edit sounds quite quickly. So let's have a look at that menu structure. When we want to go into it the regular way, we would just push the edit button and then we have a list of submenus and with the two buttons here, we can switch between them, for example, go into the synthesizer menu, press edit again, and then we can go to the drum oscillator and here we have our settings. We can go out with the exit knob, but like you saw, this is actually a bit menu divey. So luckily we have another option to go to this oscillator menu, which is super quick. When we press the function button, it will stay lit and that means that those 16 buttons down here will jump us to certain menus. And the first button is the drum oscillator. When I click that, we are right there at the setting. We have the filter settings, we have effects, VCA, envelopes, LFOs, sequencer settings, copy and paste, the setup even, sample or USB, file management. So yeah, we are right there at the press of one button. 
And this is why I don't really use the way I showed you earlier, where you go into the layers, because you don't really have to. You can just jump there directly. And then when we go back to the drum oscillator menu, for example, we have a very simple screen and certain parameters that you can adjust. Now on the first screen, there are two parameters. There is the form, which is analog percussion for analog voices or digital percussion, for example. And then you have a transpose setting. And those two visual knobs are controlled with those two real knobs. So with the left knob, I can create a different oscillator type, analog symbol, analog clap, or a digital synthesizer. And with the rightmost knob here, I can transpose it. Now, on the top left here, we can see a bunch of dots. And those are the menu pages, which we can navigate with the left and right arrow keys here. So one step to the right, we're at the tune menu. And again, we have knobs on the display corresponding to the real knobs. So I can simply turn those knobs and adjust stuff. So when you're designing sounds here, you're really just going left and right through the menu for which those two buttons are here. So we're going one more, one more, one more. And you see already you have a lot of stuff to adjust because this is a real synthesizer. But like I said, it's actually very quick to do because you're in the drum oscillator menu and it's all just going left or right and using the four knobs. And most menus are laid out in a way that you can actually start at the first page and then you just go right knobs knobs, right knobs knobs, right knobs knobs and so on. Because the menu is streamlined in a way that the sound design is being made easy. Okay, I prepared a snare sample real quick. So let's jump into the sequencer and see how that works. You can set the current part's steps from anywhere. You simply press the steps button and then you can enter your steps. And when you press play, we'll hear them. So even though I'm in the drum oscillator menu, I can set my steps and create a basic drum pattern. For more fine tuning though, it makes sense to go into the sequencer menu and see what's up there. To go there, we simply press the function button and sequence edit. And there we have the option to go into the main sequencer menu where we adjust the tempo, but 120 is fine. So we go out of there and go to the note track view. Here we see our steps as green bars. So all the active steps are the green bars and in the note track or note value NT V view here, we can use the knobs to adjust the pitch. So for example, we can assign the first four steps to the four knobs, and then I can adjust the pitch of the first note. And when I press play, we'll hear that. So that's very easy. Next up, we have the gate length screen. So there we can sequence gate lengths. We have a velocity screen to sequence velocity, position, which is quite interesting and which is also the same as on the little deformer three. So here we can make the steps play in a different order. Right now we see an upwards sloping ramp. So step one is being played at step one, step two at step two and so on. But we could also shift step 16, which is active to a different step here. We simply go there and then we put it to step number three, for example. So when I press play now, we see that when the light reaches step three, it'll actually play step 16. And this is a cool way to shuffle up your sequences or to make them stay in tune and just, you know, switch uh, around when the different sounds are playing. Next, we have the sub position track. And for that, let me enable all the steps real quick. And um, this one lets us adjust swing per step. So we can adjust certain spacings. And um, for a regular swing pattern, I'm just going to adjust every other note. And then we have a mod page where we can 
have a modulation source from tons of sources. Again, you'll know them from the little deformer 3. So you have one envelope, another envelope, the amplitude envelope for the VCA. We have LFOs, 16 global LFOs. We have four random generators per voice. And let's choose random generator 4 here now. And the destination should be, well, let's actually yeah, put it in note amount high. So every trigger will now alter the pitch. And yeah, as you saw, we can also change the gate length. For example, we can add a little bit of delay randomly, a bit of swing. We can change the velocity randomly or in fact, not randomly because yeah, we have lots of different other modulation sources here as well. We have our four knobs and also like you see always the inverted modulation source as well. We have velocity and then we have CC numbers as well. On the right here, we can change the track resolution. So right now it's playing 16th notes, but we can also play it slower or faster, but of course still synced to the clock. On the next modulation page, we can set a probability for step skipping. So right now at the maximum value 511, it'll play every step. I'm going to turn it down. It will roll the dice for each step and see whether it will sound or not. We also have randomized timing where we can just give it a totally chaotic feel if we want to or do it a little more subtly. And of course we have a start and last step. So each of our 16 tracks can have a different start and end point. And the last step for each sequence is step 64. So yeah, we can have up to 64 steps for each track. Now, because this video is not supposed to be an in-depth demo, I will leave it at that. But um, yeah, there's of course lots more apart from, you know, the envelopes, the LFOs, the random generators. We also have a song mode where you can chain presets together into a full song. We have um, the sample thing where we can import samples and then mangle them the Gotham way. We can also chop samples on the device. We can map them to MIDI keys. So it's really a fully featured device. And if you're on Moffwigler, for example, definitely check out the thread there to see how people are using this bass drum. And of course, the user manual is also free for you to download. All right, and that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them below the video in the comments. Also check out the video description for more links to all kinds of Gotham and content. And yeah, have fun with your instruments and see you soon on YouTube.